Hey, welcome back to another episode of Project CMS. While the cars tore down, getting some parts made, I wanted to do a bit on the aesthetics of the vehicle. Uh, I have a design background. I used to design publications and everything from character design, concept design. And so as my personal background is the aesthetics of things. And I wanted to cover the aesthetics of the design of this car and potential changes that can be made to improve it. Um, I'm, this is going to be probably a pretty long presentation. I'm going to talk about the, the stock car itself and then existing uh, body kits and things people have done, uh, and as well as some photoshops. So bear with me and sit back and uh, take it all in. Now, the aesthetics of anything is in the eye of the beholder. So regardless of my background and what I say and what I believe, doesn't mean it's going to appeal to everyone. Uh, I might have a, a broader range of understanding uh, what can appeal to the mass, but at the same time, that doesn't mean you're going to like it. And a lot of the images I'm going to show, um, they have, uh, I, I've collected them from the internet for years, so you may see, even see your car. Uh, and, you know, I, I try not to post anything I'm not too big a fan of, and if I do show something that I'm not particularly fond of, uh, I'm not going to bash it and braid it. It's your your choice to do what you've done to your car and if you like it that's great um, but I'm going to show uh, some things about the car as well as some things people have done and kind of critique and explain how it's affected the uh, overall aesthetic so to start off with we're going to start with the stock and what we got here this is a photo I took of my car uh, for the second paint job and the reason I'm showing this is this cropping made me realize something very particular about the car's design. And I'd showed this this photo around the web for a while, um, plenty of forums and whatnot, and it, it, it was fairly popular. And what I believe has happened is I've cropped out part of the area that keeps the car dated. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show that in closer detail. But from this perspective, uh, it, it captures all the nice lines of the car. You can see the, the flaring of the fenders here, uh, as well as the nice slope of the hood, uh, the form, the muscular form that comes out of the, the bulge and all that, uh, the roof line, which is somewhat distorted because of the, the um, moon roof, but ignore that for now. So show that image, and what we're going to look at next these are um, images of completely stock all tracks and the first thing I can point out here is probably the biggest flaw in the aesthetic of the design is the way the uh, flares are on the fenders and the flares actually really make the car look a lot better but when you don't fill them with tire they're just overhanging especially in the rear where you have a much narrow track compared to the front. You just have this massive wheel gap uh, that's just exaggerated versus what, what's normally there. So, And then in the front of the car, you can see how just that wheel gap is just ridiculous there. It, it breaks up um, the flow of the car. It makes everything almost seem like it's shifted over from where the wheels attach to the ground. Uh, but the, the lines here, I mean the rest of them are actually quite nice. Even with the, the original style, the hood looks quite good. And then from the rear, and then another from the front. So overall, it is an attractive car, but there are things about it that look dated. Uh, the pop-up headlights, nothing can be changed. I mean, th that can be changed, but at the same time, that's iconic to look. I don't mind them. Uh, this black grille that goes across dates the car as well. However, it's signature to this car. So next we're going to look at a, a Photoshop file. And what I've got here, this is a image that is on a tire rack. And essentially what it is, uh, this is what they use for their wheel fitment. And this is a stock all track, stock wheels. And you can see here, one of the issues is you've got this massive wheel gap here. And so, the one thing I'm going to look at first is the silhouette. 
when doing concept design uh, for mechanical or character what, whatever, the silhouette is typically the first thing that is gone after because that is what is ingrained in our memory. Uh, when you think of iconic things and you see a silhouette, it's immediately recognizable. So the curves and the, the, the lines and all that that's, that's dealt with in the, the silhouette it is very important to the uh, overall look. So here we have blacked out version of the car. And it's very forward. You can see just by looking at it um, that a lot of the mass of the vehicle is shifted above the front of the wheels. And to, to give you an example, when you, when you think of a lot of exotic cars or cars that are very iconic as far as their design and the way they look, you can see their, their silhouette and everything about it is striking. And when you look at this, something seems off just a little bit. Um, even when you look at this, even though it's completely a side view, there's something almost like three quarters about it. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's as, as side view as it should be. So what I'm going to do here is show a cropping. And when you remove that lower section, like I, I showed in the very first image, you can see that it changes quite a bit. Something does feel a little bit sleeker about it, a little bit more modern, and also uh, it, it forces that um, side perspective a little bit more uh, more defined. Um, and so what I've come to is I believe the the issue is actually uh, not necessarily the top part of the car, it's this this lower section. And remember this car was intended to be a rally car. And because of being a rally car, it has a lot of ground clearance. Um, my, this car, mine, uh, is lower than my old 350Z as the roof line, but actually still has more ground clearance just because of the way it's designed. And I'm going to show you here. This area here is what I think is the hang-up. And if you look where it's highlighted, there is a, a couple issues. Um, the the lines, there's a little bit of awkwardness, almost um, juxtaposed against the curviness of the car. There's this line that's created. Um, and what you can see here is that the lowest section is the middle. It comes down here, but then it stoops up here. And the problem that creates is you've got this high, it, it kind of breaks the line of the car. You don't have this smooth line that goes all the way through and then connects up. It kind of goes up and then down and then up and then up. Um, and it just, I feel like it's a little bit, um, it doesn't have a good transition uh, as far as I'm concerned. I think that a little bit can be proved. What really could have been done on Toyota Zen is just the lowering of this front fender line and having it go up. And one thing I want to discuss that makes making body kits for these vehicles actually pretty hard is the, the very long front overhang. Uh, more modern cars, they tend to have a very short front overhang. Um, the engines move behind the wheels where that's not the case for this vehicle. So what I'm going to show in this image, this is sort of the idea of the angles that's involved in the uh, overhang. The, the rear is actually not so bad. It's this bump, uh, not the bumper, the muffler uh, that becomes an issue. I, if you ever had the car pulled up onto a, a flatbed, you'll see that there's a good chance that the muffler is going to hit the ground. Um, also, the front's going to scrape like hell. You have to, I have to use a set of two ramps just to get it onto the flatbed uh, to kind of break up the angle. So if you think about it, when you extend this down, you're going to reduce this, which is going to lead to more scraping, especially once you lower it. Um, and speaking of lowering, you know, the simplest thing to do to increase the to improve the aesthetics of this car is get rid of this fender gap. Uh, the tires and wheels that came with the car were small. Um, that's just that was what was popular at the time. And I'm going to show just an example with uh, a very popular wheel, an iconic wheel. Um, so there's not much debate on the aesthetics. But we're going to go ahead. Actually, before I do that, first thing we're going to do is we're going to lower the car. You know, that's maybe an inch, an inch and a half lowering. But already, you can see that it does look a little bit more dynamic. It's not as uh, rally car looking, not as bouncy. Um, and then what I'm going to do next is add some wheels. Now, this this is 
guesstimated to be about 17 inch size wheels um, and a, a tire size that would be just a little bit taller than stock um, but what it's doing is it's increased that diameter and filled that wheel well a little bit a little better and it's just helping the, the overall look of the car. It helps sort of tie the wheel area together and it detracts a little bit from this other grounding area. Um, and then the next example actually going in size bigger, this probably be closer to 18s. Um, and while I'm not a huge fan of 18s, they can look good in the car, uh, depending on wheel style, offsets, all that. Uh, really key to all this is, is diameter, offset, and tire size. Uh, to get the right aesthetic, but also it goes along with performance. Uh, you know, wider tires typically are used for more grip, and it helps give that more ma uh, muscular feel to the vehicle, especially since it's intended for racing. So that's just to kind of give you some some of my thoughts on the basic aesthetic of the vehicle as is, and we're going to go ahead and move over back to here and look at a few other images. Now here's an illustration of the Celica, and this sort of points out what I'm saying. You can see the hard lines here that goes across, and then how much more height there is in this front area. I mean, it's almost like there's a, a chunk of missing, um, but that's how they designed it. And I can only assume it's to increase ground clearance. Um, in, in this time, long hood lines were sort of the aesthetic. It, it was that way for a long time. If you look back through classic vehicles, um, very long front ends of the vehicles. Uh, it was, you know, thought to have a larger engine, uh, more masculine, more sex appeal, and that's just how it is uh, as far as way cars used to be designed. What's interesting, though, is that the Celica was more intended for a female audience, and the aesthetics, when they were designing it, were more gore... Uh, they got more feedback from women than typical. Now, changing the car... Really, the, this is about how far most people go. They change the front bumper and hood to the RC, CS, Group A bodywork. And that really does modernize and improve the look of the car. It adds a little bit more muscular flair because you've got these raised bulges rather than just the flat hood with the scoop on it. Um, it's also more functional, at least if you've, you've got an inner core that supports how it's supposed to flow the air. Um, this alone... I think helps the look of the car quite a bit. And there's just another example. But as you can see, even with this different bodywork and even larger wheels, when it's not been lowered, you still have this large wheel gap. Without spacers or a better offset, you still have an even larger wheel gap in the back that gives it that offset look. And the front view of the RC um, bodywork, which is just, it, it looks really good. Um, the car's front, there's not a lot to complain about it, especially since you don't see that the sides are lower. Um, it works on its own, and it, it, it it's very clean and all just, it looks good. It's not detracted by the other line. And this is my car, um, and the reason I'm showing this, this is an example of going with larger wheels, larger tires, lowered uh, proper offset and spacers, and there's, in the RC bodywork, and that alone, I mean, that is as far as a lot of people want to go, and that that's justifiably so because it does improve the car a lot and it doesn't you know go with any gaudy bodywork or anything that's distracting um, it's clean it's simple uh, it's classic and it you know I'm somewhat happy with that however there's still a little bit I want to work on to kind of push the car a little bit further and here you can see it, the car produces a lot of shadow and since it's close to the ground it doesn't stand out as much uh, unless the lights hitting it right and because of that shadow distracts from that line that's produced. It sort of blurs the whole line. And it just, you know, it takes a really bright day at the right angles to see how it protrudes out the front. Here it's a little bit more noticeable, but still not a whole lot. And this is an example. This is really key to, to the offsets. I mean, if you look at the actual rally car, you can see how they fit these wheels in the fenders and how much it just completes the car, gives it just a much nicer look. And these wheels, of course, are perfect for the car. But yeah, filling out these fenders, that's really key uh, to making this car look good.
So next, uh, we're going to look over here. Uh, this is Toyota Celica Online. This website's been around forever. I, this is about the only thing I've ever used it for, and it has this guide to body kits. Um, it's not every body kit, but it does list some that are in production. It has some pictures. These, Some of these names um, you might never find because a lot of these, these kits, you've only seen them as replicas. But as we go through here, and I'll show you some examples of cars fitted, you'll see some of these, these kits and how they've been sort of reapplied. Uh, this lip you'll see on quite a few vehicles I'll show. And this Blitz style kit ended up looking nothing like these prototype pictures. Carcept, uh, Urbani, I think it is. I'm not entirely sure. They went, uh, when they shut down, they had everything on clearance. And there's probably a few bits I probably could have grabbed. Uh, this lip, this is probably a replica of the lip I just showed you. Um, you'll see this lip, these skirts on some cars. And the, the one issue that you have to to observe, and a lot of the problems with the kits that, that have been made for these cars, is they, they go extreme. They, they break away from the curves, or they they try some very strange things, they borrow things from other cars that just don't flow well, and it, it doesn't, most of them I don't feel like look right, and which is why most people haven't purchased uh, off-the-shelf kits for these cars, just because most of them aren't very good. They, they could be okay, but I mean, if you look at this one, the, the only thing I like about this is sort of how the bumper cuts up, but that's really about it. You saw a lot of the Shogun style, which got real popular. Go ahead and get more of these open. You'll see some of this lip. You can still actually get this rear section. Um, and what's interesting is these side skirts are inspired by the 205 skirts. Uh, and speaking of the 205 skirts, they're actually the same across the board. If you see any U.S. Celica skirts in the junkyard, uh, they're the same kit. And this is where I meant with the Shogun style. Um, it's just it's overly aggressive. It doesn't. It just doesn't do anything for me. This was a wide body kit. I've never seen one in person. Uh, there's not a lot of pictures, but I actually have more I'll show on it. Um, a variation of a kit we saw earlier. The Hero. The Hero actually had some an interesting front bumper, um, and I think it only worked for narrow body though. I've seen I've seen a few cars online with that body kit, uh, all in Japan. This body kit here actually makes the car look even more dated, uh, just the way it shapes it. Same thing with this one. It just it just seems like a huge mistake. Now this, this has been considered one of the some consider the only decent kit made with the car. Uh, and this is Savage Design. And it's been sold, I think Vector was another uh, European brand it was carried under and uh, Another one that started with a P, uh, Perfecter or whatever. I can't pronounce it properly. Uh, but they were distributed out of Canada. However, it seems like we were never able to get them to actually sell it. Um, people have inquired with them. I've inquired with them. And either they've not responded or they've been kind of flaky. Uh, but they claim to produce the kit. And I don't. I may, I may know of one person that actually got the whole kit, but they got the wrong lip. And there's variations of this kit, which we'll look at later. And so next, we're going to look at mass production kits. And this is, you know, some of the kits we've we've already seen, some kits that uh, weren't on that list, uh, to give you an idea how people may have taken them and pushed them maybe a little bit further or, you know, flubbed them up. There's that lip we mentioned. This, um, I'm not entirely sure what this kit is, but this was just another example. It, it actually could have possibly been okay if there was maybe a few less holes and some of this other stuff shaped up a little bit differently. I believe this was an Australian company that produced this front bumper. There's another variation of it. And again, it's it's not horrible, 
um, just some things could possibly been to smooth it out and make it flow a little bit better. Uh, your Bonnie skirts. This is a kit that's actually currently in production. Um, I you see it on eBay, and that's another variation of that kit with a different b rear bumper. That lip we saw earlier. And this this is one of the problems. There's that same lip, but these skirts. I, I just feel like the sharpness of these these edges kind of detract from the, the rest of the car. I think if things were maybe rounded off a little bit differently, um, not so harsh, they would it would go pretty well. This is uh, factory side skirts for the convertible, which is something that people might be able to apply to the car. Now this, these are real body kits, but this is through Forza. Um, they just had good shots, and so I just grabbed a few of these to sort of show. Um, I think these might be 205 skirts, but the reason I posted this one in here because is this lip. Um, not sure if this was a production piece or uh, something someone had made. For Forza, this rear skirt is actually still available. I think you can actually find this front bumper too, but it's not designed for the RC bodywork. And it's a shame that Forza, they didn't go through the trouble of modeling the RC front bumper for these body kits, which would have been a nice way to sort of experiment and see how some things might have looked. This is actually a Savage front lip. Uh, someone's mixed with like Shogun style skirts. And this is another Savage lip that someone's with those, uh, those sharper skirts I mentioned earlier. And this is the actual Blitz style kit that was produced, and it's on the market now. Um, I'm not a fan of it, but it's another option that's out there. And this is some other bits from those kits I showed earlier, and I, I don't think this looks bad. Um, one thing that they did, uh, they left off the weird fake brake duct section that goes here for the skirts, and they actually don't they don't flow too bad. Um, and, and of course, I like the, the rear bumper. I, I think this rear section here would have been nice if it could have been bought separately and applied to the stock bumper. Yeah, I have no idea which kit this is. This looks similar to the other one, but it looks a bit more aggressive, uh, larger in the sides too. And this is that re same kit that's being reapplied to this. Of course, they took the RC bumper, they cut out the center. And what I don't like about this is um, the height that you have between the grill and this top bar. I, I believe that if this was actually a little bit lower, closer to the height of the top of these lights, it wouldn't seem so massive. It would flow a little better. And that lip, again. So that's mass production kits. And now um, this is custom stuff. This is stuff people have made. Um, they may have made it from other cars. It may have been something that was production in other countries that we just never heard about. Um, I don't think that was the case with this one just because it's been riveted to the bumper or screwed to the bumper. This one was quite popular in the forums. And, and what you can see with some of these, this one's really hard to see. Um, it's just a small black lip that's been attached underneath the bumper. Is that once the car looks fairly wide with the flared fenders uh, and nice wheels under it, but once you start lowering it, when you lower it too much, it narrows the car a little bit. Uh, this one looks like they used either a, a Ford um, Probe or a Miata bumper or something to, to get rid of the grill and, and close it off. But this is exactly what I mean. You tapers in and it keeps going down and it sort of narrows the car just a little bit. And it takes away from uh, the width just a, just a hair. So you have to balance out how much you lower it versus the actual width of the car. These front bumpers, uh, there's a couple cars I want to show with this bumper. It actually looks like the old Impreza. Uh, I, think, I can't remember if it's WC8, something like that. Um, aftermarket front bumper. It could be an actual Celica bumper, but it looks a lot like the Impreza bumper. 
And people have shown that the Impreza overhang is actually pretty close um, to ours. This is another one. This one had potential. Uh, throw away these rear rear brake ducts, and I actually think this would, and of course different wheels, uh, and I think this wouldn't be too bad. And this one's very simple, and it looks clean. They they just put a little bit of a splitter here, or or to, you know, a partial lip, and it brings the line down a little bit. I feel like if it was completed across, it'd look even better. But just that simpleness, uh, I think it it went well with the car. Now I'm showing this because of this kit that this car had made, but what's not obvious right away is this is actually a GT4 as well that they have put. Um, Impreza headlights into. So, you know, headlight conversions aren't very popular with these cars, and they don't always come out right. This is just to show an example of one that someone's done. But it... W what it's changed, and this is what I think hurts the car, there's a slope here that comes down, and that's actually part of what makes the, the hood and the profile of the hood so beautiful in these cars, is the, the curvature that was selected. And what's happening here is the way the curvature comes across has now been broken and it's more abruptly down. Um, and it, it sort of dulls the car. I mean, this looks a little bit more conservative than that now if you just look at the, the top section. And here's a side view of them. And you can see what I mean. See how this curves down? And then the blue car, it curves and then drops. And it's just... It's, it's a little more brutish. It, it has... Uh, the curves just aren't near as attractive to me. Uh, but this kit, now, one thing interesting, this is a 205 wing stacked on top of a 185 wing. And there might be some potential there if someone was to mess with it more um, and maybe chop up the factory wing a little bit more. Uh, but the skirts are something I've not seen before, and they look really good, and this front lip looks good. However, this could be a variation of one of the Savage lips, um, but there I don't have any information else on this car. And there's the rear. And the rear, I don't mind too much. I don't like the vents. However, I think it goes down a little bit too low. I think it was maybe an inch higher, two inches higher, and sloped up. Um, and maybe did something a little bit different in the middle. I, I think I'd be all about it. And then, of course, the one next to it has no spoiler at all. And you can see how, how very curvy the car is. And this one, this is one I saw recently. Um, I thought it was an interesting uh, attempt at a front lip because it doesn't, it lowers the front a little bit and adds a little bit of protruding, but it doesn't excessively do it, and it flows into the factory uh, fenders. So this was just an interesting attempt, I thought. And this is another example of a kit we've seen. Now this is a, I believe a Malaysian car, and it kept getting pushed to different levels of uh, customization. And this is just one form of it. And there's a couple things I actually uh, like about it and find interesting. Uh, and this was another Malaysian car. I actually saw this one in person one visit. And it's not a, I don't think it's a, a GT4. However, it just was kind of interesting. Someone who designed their own kit and had the whole thing made. And the ap actual use of these kind of bolt-on fender flares, which we don't see a lot of on our cars. They, uh added a lip here, but it's it's uh, blended in, and so you wouldn't even notice. So it's not entirely obvious what they did to this car. Um, and that might not be a horrible idea, to, a way of approaching it. This one just has a small lip they've made. Now this one, uh, I believe it's a modified version of the Savage front lip. I think he used the front lip, and then he made a new front bumper, and kind of blended the whole thing, and then add these alien antennae or whatever they are to it. Um, it actually had potential. You you lose this and, and kept the factory uh, vents and I think that, and of course the middle bar, I, I think it would have been alright, but the, the really the best thing about it is actually the low-rise headlights which you'll see on a few cars in here. And he has his own wing that he'd made as well. Profile of the car. A close-up of the, the skirt and how it meets. Another way a person made their own DIY, uh, DIY lip, 
just something that extends the front end a little bit more. The other car. Custom hood someone had made. Custom skirts. They actually look like they could have been meant for a 205. Another custom kit. And see, what's happening here, it actually seems like it looks even better here. And I think it's because the way the light hits it, it, it blends some of the things. It, it distracts some of the lines in here, and it makes it all seem sort of more unified. And there's that Malaysian car again. And that lip I mentioned earlier that might be from a Subaru. Another view of it. Same car, but with the buddy kit unpainted. Now this is something I actually like. I, I think this was, this was an interesting attempt. Um, I think this might have been a Thai car. Um, just, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of everything on it, but something about it looks very clean, and the, the car looks, it just works. Um, the line that they produce here, the way it curves down, the whole thing flows together to the front of the car. It has this uh, sweeping forward motion, like an arrow. So it gives it that forward piercing uh, motion. Uh, and I think they did, they did a pretty good job with it. Another view of it. This is just uh, an interesting experiment someone did. I'm not keen on the body kit. There's actually a couple lines that this rear bumper produces I might have liked had things been higher. Maybe not so uh, aggressive. Uh, but they actually made their own head taillights here, which were an in interesting approach. Now this is a production piece. Um, it's a skid plate for the rear gas tank. And what I think is good about this is it takes away... The, the problem with the, the factory gas tank cover is that it slopes down. Uh, and I don't know if there's really much of a reason for it to. Maybe they were doing that to help balance out the weight that the, that the muffler will produce. Uh, not, not actual physical weight, but visual. I think going straight across is far more appealing. And I think I'd like to make a new gas tank cover that sort of go straight across and blends in with the new bumper work I want to do. You know, not necessarily a diffuser, but something that has the diffuser slight appearance. Another custom kit. And that car with the, the taillights I mentioned. You know, it's so well painted. Um, it, even though I don't care for all these vents and things, it, it is sleek looking. There is something appealing about it, even without the spoiler. Um, it is well done for for uh, being an aggressive body kit. I think these are 205 skirts. Um, and that, I showed this car earlier for the lip, but it has this uh, diffuser they made on here. You know, this might be a race car. Some of these things might be functional required. Uh, this, the reverse spoiler being as high as the roof is actually something that's needed for proper down, downforce uh, over aesthetics. Car showed earlier, the, the rear section. And another car. This actually, I have in the Savage section I showed, this actually could be a, a custom lip, but I, I think it is Savage. And this is something, I, I think he has potential here with what he's doing. It just needs to be cleaned up as far as the lip goes. It's, I guess it's discontinued now. And he's taking a, uh, I think it's a 92 GT bumper, or 1993, and he's chopped it up to sort of get the effect of the RC bumper. Um, but the, the thing that I actually like about this is that this lip here is from a, a Ford Focus bumper, and this is something I had thought Toyota should have done, or at least a lip that should have been produced, because without the rest of the body kit, what this was doing when it's completed is it brings the slope of this front bumper closer to the angle of the, the how low the middle section is and just sort of unifies the whole thing. It adds more weight to the front and gives it that, that arrow appearance that I mentioned earlier. So get comfortable, we've still got quite a ways to go. <laughs> now these wide bodies, uh, some of these are pretty interesting and th they're all pretty much custom except for, for one. Um, this is the Boucher Celica, I'm probably pronouncing that right, wrong, sorry. Um, and this is an actual GT2 race car. And I don't like everything about the ground effects on it, but they are functional. Um, 
it's as low as the ground as possible. It's got a diffuser. Uh, it's got a crazy looking wing. But you know, I think all this was done for a reason. The guy's gone as far as using TTE parts in the car. Um, but there's some things about it, especially the, the way the fenders are flared, that look really good. Here, here you can really see the way the fenders pull out from the body. And I think there's something, you know, especially if someone was building a race car, uh, an attack car, that this would really be an interesting approach. And what I really like is how he deleted the headlights. Um, of course, for weight, but I think this uh, looks pretty good, uh, not having these lines that cut into the hood. Some more of his car. And of course, having these these nice, deep, sexy mesh wheels really help the aesthetics as well. And then the Messiah kit, um, which I've talked about before, this is a Japanese uh, wide body kit that was made. And it actually, they didn't spend a lot dealing with lowering the center section here. Um, they did lower it a little bit, but mostly worried about rounding it into these fenders. And the fender flares are actually quite nice. I even like the spoiler. I think the spoiler could be uh, decent on a regular wide body car. Um, and I even like the, the, the partial lip here, though I think it would be even better if it completed all the way across. But this is RC bodywork. Um, I think keeping the black grill would have been more appealing, um, just because I'm accustomed to that. And this here's a few more views of that. In, in red, which, you know, I've only seen it like that in here. Even the back, the way the, the skirt is handled actually could have been an interesting add-on for our bumpers. And these are all custom here. This one actually is rural drive and V8 powered. Um, and what's odd is that all the trouble they went through to, to do all this custom work, and they did such a shoddy job putting the scoop in. I, it just looks like it's laying there. But the, the top view actually has a nice flow to it, the way it's flared. Not so keen on the rear bumper, though. Now this, even though part of it's Photoshop, I added the, the RC bumper... Uh, vents and the uh, the scoop. This was a uh, TRD wide body GT2 race 180, I think 184. Um, and this body work was for sale at one point. It's all fiberglass. Um, and uh, I don't know whatever happened to it, but it, I thought it was had some really nice lines to it. And I thought I had a lot more pictures of it, but I could only find this one. Um, and it just it just looks great. A member uh, is working on doing some nice fender flares on his car as well. Uh, and this is just an example of his work so far. And this is another custom wide body kit. Closer view of it. Especially like the, the rear bumper. I think that was kind of well. I like how it, it cuts up in the middle. I think that the way the car is shaped, it just flows better than going all the way across. I think going all the way across adds too much weight, visual weight to the rear of the car. Um, where it's just partial, it sort of breaks things up um, and it's not just too much solid color. Because the car being so smooth and doesn't have a lot of, you know, lines and indentions and vents and all the other junk in the back, uh, when you have, you know, this big smooth piece that goes across, I think it you have to break it up a little bit to look better. So, now... This is a lip um, that has currently been remade, and there's two versions of it. And the cur this is the Arrow Magic lip, and this version is no longer in production. This is a Japanese uh, kit, and there was a company in the UK who took the other version, and they had it replicated. And from what I understand, it's available, but I don't know the price, and I don't know how to to get it over here. But I do believe they are making it and selling it now. But this is the version. This is the lip. Um, I just call this one Type 1. This is the one, this is, I guess, before he uh, prototyped it, it was broken and he had to have it repaired and, and fixed. But this is the 
just some different views of it. And these are different cars that have it. This is the official version of it uh, in Japan on some car. And I don't think it's bad. I, I don't mind it. Um, I would not buy the reproduction because of being fiberglass and what I explained with the long overhang. You're going to break it. And I'll go into that a little bit more in the one lip I I'd mentioned. But what I, what I think is good about the visual line of this is this has the vert side skirts. And they flow really well into it. And he has the flaps here. Even though he doesn't have a rear skirt or anything, it helps bring the line back up. And then we have the Type 2 lip, which is actually the one I prefer. Um, but I think it actually would be better being black as sort of treated as a diffuser piece or just a lower section. Um, I just feel like something isn't quite as fitting about it. This car has a lot of carbon fiber. I believe these door panels also are carbon fiber. I think last I heard this car was disassembled and parted out. And they've got these great Volk wheels on here. And of course the Savage kit. And this is the most popular kit. Um, this car is here in St. Louis. And I tried to, to catch up with the guy because I wanted to see it in person. But he had sold it already by the time I got a hold of him. Uh, one thing he did different about his is he blended it. Uh, which I'm not as keen on. I, I like the, the division with the lines. And he removed his side molding. Uh, some people, I mean, that's all up to the owner. Some people like it, some people don't. Um, I think it works better on the 6th gen because there's a sharper line in the doors that sort of creates a contrast. It breaks up the, the height of the car a little bit. But the 185 is much smoother and doesn't have that same division. And so having that side trim, I think, breaks up a little bit better personally. And the same kit with just different wheels. I think he still has these wheels for sale. Yellow version. And, and what's interesting, you know, sometimes I don't think this kit looks good in every angle. And I think you really have to run wide, larger wheels for it to really stand out. And of course, I think this looks good with the picture so small. One kind of in along with the 205s. And there's two versions of the bumper. There was the dual exit uh, for the front-wheel drive models, and then there's a single exhaust for the all-wheel drive models because the gas tank's in the way, and the all-wheel drive can't run a dual exhaust. At least a real one. You can run a fake one. But you can see here what it does with the line. It doesn't lower the rear too much. It's nice and smooth. Uh, you got the, the side skirts that don't go down too low. They blend into the body. They have this swooping motion uh, where they kind of blend the fenders outward. So it helps protrude the, uh, the, the blisters that makes the fenders flared. And then the front, I mean, the, front, the front's actually my, my least favorite part of the kit, but I think it's not bad. I prefer this version of the lip. It, it's not intended for the RC bumper, um, but it, it's actually meant for this bumper but I like the way it protrudes a little bit better. Um, it, it doesn't stick out as far. And this is an example of it with no skirts. <laughs> Single outlet. I think that's a Photoshop though, but that's exactly how it would be. Even though this is an RC bumper, this is probably the best example of this car. And this is a vert, but the vert, as you can see, has fender flares on the rear and front. And this one, I don't know if they had recreated the kit in carbon fiber, but he at least wrapped it in carbon fiber. And I think it looks pretty sharp. You know, if this this was available here in Poly, I would get this lip just because of simplicity. I could just throw it on and I'm done. I don't have to put any more thought into it. Even though it's not perfect, it it looks good enough and it would be 
done. Um, here's a single exit that I mentioned earlier. Uh, but that's part of the reason I'm having to kind of piece together the kit I want, and I'll go in a bit into more of those pieces later. And here, here's an example of, you know, stock body car next to one with the Savage kit. And you can see what I mean with the way the line is lowered underneath the car. Uh, it modernizes it quite a bit. It just makes this look so much older and a little bit less sporty uh, compared to the version with the body kit. And there's the another version picture of the that one I just think is a great example. Even with the spoiler, I'm not big on these super type spoilers. I think their spoiler is not bad. And there's that blended one again. I've seen it called the Vector Kit. Um, I think it's gone through, the company's gone through a few changes or distributors uh, over in Europe. And it'd be nice to see this get reproduced now, but I don't think it's going to happen. Now, what we've got here are splitters. And this is a bit, things are a bit more functional, meant for racing. Um, Forza example. This is more of an air dam. I don't know if he has an actual splitter underneath here, but this is a time attack car. Um, and it, it looks pretty decent. And this is actually probably the lowest uh, cost thing to get done to put us put on there because you just buy these as a strip uh, from race shops and then you just attach it yourself. And this is a popular autocross car. He has a splitter and uh, the air dam. Here's one with just the uh, splitter. Another Forza example. This is the uh, V8 rural drive twin turbo car, supercharged car. I forget what he is at this time. Of course, custom hood. Um, but he's also got some interesting pieces done. Now, this is the J Speed uh, splitter that was made a long time ago. I don't know if you get any more. It looks like a damn snow shovel, but, you know, it's a functional piece. If you're racing and you need the downforce, there you go. It's pre-made. Okay, and then this. I had these at one point. And I felt like these were a very good solution. Um, here you can also see the low-rise headlights, which I just think improve the car's look so much more when the headlights are up. Um, but these are splitters that were made in the UK from a group buy, and uh, I had since sold mine. And the reason I got rid of them was they're fiberglass, and I felt like they did the job good. But the problem was, is because of the long overhang and being lowered, uh, the way the roads are designed here, there's this huge gap in front of every driveway, and I was already hitting them when trying to exit. So I'm like, you know, the first time I leave the house after installing them, I'm going to destroy them. And I just decided I'd rather you know, sell them to someone who could actually make use of them uh, than, than do it myself. And, and what I did not like about them was this open area under the grill. I felt like if it was a complete lip, it would have been perfect. And what my actual plan was, was to make it a complete lip. Um, and from what I understand, the person I sold it to was doing it, but I had not heard from them. Uh, but what this does, as you can see here, is it completes that line from the middle of the car across. And it just sort of helps uh, ground the front end a little bit more. There's a, you know, different perspectives. They look better than others. And here you can you can especially see how it extends that line. And this is when I had had them myself and test fit them on the car. And, you know, I, I liked them. I thought they they looked good. They help lower the front of the car, add a little bit more weight to it, uh, increase, you know, just a little more mas masculine, muscular. Now, this was a Photoshop, and, of course, these, these connector bars are in the wrong place. They should be up here higher uh, on the, the bumper bar. But if I wasn't to go as far as producing uh, a center section, I thought if I left them as a fuser, it had a, or had a fuser go across and just use them as splitters, I think that it would have looked pretty good. And this is, of course, before I had the car painted, this is a Photoshop of what it would look like complete. Um, but, you know, they're just not an option where they're not in production anymore. Um, I mean, someone could replicate them still, but that's sort of the end of that. 
And now I'm going to show you a couple examples of cars that, you know, not, overall they look pretty good. Um, and there's some cues in there that could really inspire some people to do their own stuff. Um, they may not be perfect, but they, they actually came up with some things that were just great. Uh, and one of them is this Red Devil car. And, you know, it's a show car, maybe even a race car, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's another Malaysian car. And it does some really interesting things. And I don't know where all the parts are from. I mean, they all could have been fiberglass and made from scratch. But the front bumper does resemble some MK3 Super bumpers a little bit. So that could have been a base. He did get rid of the pop-up headlights. And it's not bad, but it does break up the flow that I mentioned, the way that, that comes down. Um, I think maybe a little bit more could be done. If anything, what needs to be changed is this front uh, vent on the hood. But that would require a little bit of metal work unless the hood was made of fiberglass or whatever. And, you know, here's a profile of the car. And it doesn't break it up too much. I mean, you can see it, it, it keeps that curve somewhat. But from the front, um, I'm not keen on them. Now, the back is, the, is I think, the part that's best. I mean, if, except for the, the taillights, of course. I don't know why I had to put super taillights in there, because the, the factory taillights actually look quite good. Um, if they just look pieced in there. And I think it sort of detracts from the car. But what I do like is the rear... Sp uh, spats he had done. They, I looked around and they look a little bit like R32 spats um, that he made modified, but they could be something else. And then, of course, the rear diffuser. And here's just a few more views of that. I do feel like the front bumper is a little squarish, um, and that's why I think it's from the, the Supra, but it might not be. But it does, it looks aggressive, and there is some really nice lines that it produces. Um, and I think there's some good inspiration to be found in this kit. It was a nicer shot of the rear. And then the world-famous uh, Project Alltrack 101 uh, from Pat C. This car um, is the, who knows anymore, it's at least 800 all-wheel horsepower. Um, it may be more than that by now. Uh, but he had made probably the best front lip um, I had seen on the vehicle. It, it's, I mean, I mean, it's, other than being made of fiberglass, it's perfect. Um, even if, even being made of fiberglass, I probably would have bought it um, and just bought ramps for my driveway or something. Um, he took skirts that were similar to 205 skirts and he flipped them. Um, I think I prefer them the other way, but the, the lip, you know, is, is just perfect. And he hasn't come up with a rear yet, but he's using the the um, mud guards to sort of bring that line back up. So it goes across, and it sort of brings the eye back up. And it it doesn't distract so much as just leaving it um, h much higher than the rest of the car. Um, but obviously, there's going to have to be something put there eventually. And this is, I think, the current, the way it currently sits with these... Uh, um, these wheels and everything. And it's just a, a perfect example of front lip for the car. And because of this lip, I actually uh, got a lip for an Integra because it it has some similar lines in it. Um, and it's something else I want to show, wheels can really make and break these cars. Um, and these wheels on their own are not bad, and they look fine. Um, but I actually think these wheels look better without a body kit because the body kit has made the car a little bit more, it's added mass to the vehicle, and it, it dwarfs these wheels just a little bit. And it isn't, it's not bad looking, but as you can see with the previous wheels, the RPF1s, they stand out a lot more. They're, they're brighter, um, they're a little bit larger, and they help bring themselves forward so they don't kind of get sunken in with the, uh, the rest of the car. These being darker as well, I think, also cause that same effect. And here's the same, this is before he did the skirts. This is uh, just the lip with his previous wheels. And then you can see that is just that is just great. You know, I think the lines well, even without having skirts. Um I, I like I sort of like the old rally style, uh where they used to have these these big front air dams and the rest of the car was still sockish. It just it adds a lot of more forward motion to the vehicle as far as just its static appearance. 
and this is another set of wheels he had um, just to show you these you know how different combinations of wheels with the same body and the same kit uh, can affect how it looks and this car I'm going to show you. I, I, I used to call this the Zen kit, but I think, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce his name. I think it might be Zine. Um, I probably butchered it, though, and sorry for that. This is just a great looking example, and it's actually, I think, a front wheel drive uh, fourth gen swap. Um, but he's done some really great things with this car. And he has the 205 skirts, so they were slightly modified to fit, um, and he made his own rear bumper. And his rear bumper is, out of everything I've seen, the best looking. Um, his lip, I like part of it. Um, there's a small section, the way it, it flows uh, around the seam. Um, I just, uh, I'm not huge on that. I feel like it, it might have been blended just a little bit better. But that, I still think it looks pretty good. And what would keep me from ever wanting the front lip, though, is the fact that it's fiberglass. And it would just get broken uh, eventually. Um, here's a perfect shot of the rear. I mean, it's his car with the wheels and everything. I think it just overall looks great. And there's no, I mean, there's no rear spoiler. Um, and it, it just still has a great stance to it. And, and I think this is probably some of my biggest inspiration, especially with the rear. Um, and I'm going to be planning on using these same skirts. Now here, this is... Uh, a section of reappropriated kits and essentially what I'm showing here are parts from other cars that are close fit to our car uh, to the 185 and it might help with people you know picking around other parts and making something work and right now this is of course the 205 and the reason I'm showing it is because this same kit if you look at it is the same on this 185 you can see where they cut up uh, the the front bumper some, and they made it, and they, they made it work. They cut this area up here, and I'm sure they used a heat gun a little bit. They may have used some glass uh, to shape things a little bit better. Of course, they had to cut it down the middle uh, to sh to make it more narrow because even though it might not look at the the 205 is wider. Um, this is another uh, example of a car. This is a, an SS3, and the reason I'm showing it is that the spats that they use for it, the front and rear look much better on a 205 than the 205 spats and I think this is a possibility here for us to find a, a set of things that with minimal modification to bolt on that might be a good front and rear solution um, if I can find some affordable rear spats I might pick some up as an experiment uh, and this is just another 205 that I think uh, this rear bumper might work because this is the same as the 205 garage cruise uh, rear bumper that might be good to use um, and of course, here's the 185 Garage Cruise, and it uses a 205 front lip and rear bumper that's been modified, but it's hard to tell because they've cut so much of it up. And it also uses the 205 skirts. Um, but as you can see here, they took out that side molding, and I feel like that has taken away from the, the line that's produced in the middle, and it actually makes the car look a little bit more narrow because it takes away definition from where the, the inside of the, fen the doors are to where the fenders flare. And there's a few more views of it. Here you can see more obvious the lip. And then here's their 205. And you know, I really like this rear bumper that they used. Um, this rear skirt. And I don't know exactly what it's from. I believe I it was a 205 kit that I had found once, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, and here they are together. Now, the reason I show this, I showed this car earlier because of the front. Um, these are 205 spats, and they look like they might be a pretty close fit, especially if you can find them in fiberglass. Uh, I, don't, I don't think fiberglass in the rear is much of an issue because you have more clearance because of it being higher. Um, but if they need to be altered, it'd be easier to modify fiberglass ones than uh, poly. And then here's just another shot of the uh, Garage Cruise rear bumper. Now, this is interesting because I'd been curious for a long time if a... A C1 205 lip would work and this is essentially a C5, C1 205 lip that's not been cut so if you remove the center section and probably do a little bit of grinding on these side uh, blending areas I bet you could make it work on a 185 bumper especially an RC bumper where you have uh, more open areas 
Now this is something else. Um, this is a cart in Chicago, and this actually looks uh, about perfect as well. But it took quite a bit of work, and the reason I didn't buy one of these lips is because there's not a lot of top surface area, so the brackets would have to be mounted from the bottom, uh, maybe even from the sides. I'm not entirely sure if I'd be able to make that work right. Um, but this is from an Accord. I can't remember if it was a 94. Uh, but what he did is he took the lip and he heated it and stretched it. Uh, and then he made it fit. And it looks really good. Um, I think it suits the car. And uh, what I've, I'm using, um, I've got a couple of different lips. Um, and I'm using a similar technique. And it's actually sitting in the sun right now. And we'll see how it works. Um, now this is probably... I'd say one of the top lips I've seen for this car. Um, this is a Canadian car, and I actually wasn't able to communicate it with them. But we, someone on the forums was able to figure out that this is a Camaro lip. And we, after we finding pictures of an RS Camaro, um, I did a little bit of you know photo comparison or comparisons, and uh, it, I mean it looks pretty dead on. And so I bought one and I cut it up. And here um, I had made you know, some lines to sort of figure out where things need to line up uh, before I do cut it. But I had to cut it in the middle because it was too wide and it's too long. And I still have some... Here's, here you can see the actual Camaro that it came off of. Um, and I I still will probably use it. I need to do a lot more work, especially with mounting. This is another person who uh, is trying the same lip. Um, and this is just various test fits of it. Um, this is actually after I'd finished it. I just need to make something a better way to mounting it because it sags in a couple areas and I just need to you know fasten it better I thought about making a fiberglass undershell to add brackets um, so I can you know it'd be more secure but I just put it on hold because uh, I have a few other things that's far more important but I think it has potential to be a, a good lip and the reason I especially like it is because it's poly and it it's gonna have a lot more give when you hit something um, I'm just showing this one because there's been a lot of curiosity about it uh, the Cooper R lip is real popular to put on Audis and VWs and other cars. And th someone actually put one on a 185, and I just was showing this for example. Um, I'm not huge on it. I think it would look a little better if it was black or if it was just wider. But I'm not a huge fan. And uh, I'm not entirely sure. Even though this does look like the Aero Magic lip, um, it's not identical. And I have a feeling it is an MK3 Super Lip. Um, if you look on eBay, they're they look there's something that looks identical to this. And I think if you just cut out the middle section and, and shorten it, you could probably use a Super Lip to make it work. And here's another member. He used a Mustang Lip. Uh, I think it was for the 2000 model Mustang, um, the GT models. And those are fairly affordable. I think they're like seventy to one hundred dollars. Um, and it's not perfect, but it's a way to add sort of just a lower line underneath the car. Now this is a Type R lip, and this is a couple cars that have tried it. Um, and it's not perfect, but I do like it. And I have this lip, and I actually have it sitting outside uh, with some weights on it in the sun, hoping to stretch it. Uh, and I'm not sure how well it'll work, but we'll see. It's it's like a, you know, maybe an inch or so too short. Um, and you can see where this guy had cut it and made an extension, but it doesn't flow well. But it has to be cut in the middle because it's too wide, and it needs to be extended on the sides. And uh, I, th if I can use the same technique that the Sid had used on his Accord lip, I think I can make it work. This is the, the first car I saw that tried it, um, and he just cut the center section out. And you know, it, I think it, I think it works. I think it, it might be a little too low, but I think it has a lot of potential. Um, it actually has some similar, the way that the the parts protrude from it reminds me of Pat's lip uh, that he'd made. And here you can see where it's a little too short. But overall, it's it's not bad. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on wings. Um, these are just some examples of wings from other cars that people have applied, and I, I thought they were decent. Um, they're just There's just some options here. You know, ducktail. This, I believe, is from an Evo. I can't remember if it was an Evo four or Evo five, um, but I mean, it's it's there for functionality. It's adjustable wing. Um, wing I showed earlier. 
another adjustable wing. And this guy has, I mean, he has no other body work but this wing. Um, just a front view. Uh, this might be the Savage Wing. Um, it's a super style. And I went to a rally uh, with another 185 owner recently. And there was a WRX there who had... Uh, it was in a bug eyes, but he had 2004 spats on there. And he broke one of them off uh, during the rally. And he let me borrow them to see how they fit. And they're pretty close. Um... I think with a little bit of modification, this might be an option for a person to find a, an off-the-shelf spat that could fit. And there might be other cars, if you can find other cars with a similar overhang um, that could be used to work on the on the back of the, the all-track and GT4s. And uh, I know I've gone on for a while. Uh, there's been a lot to go over, a lot to look at. But this lax section is Photoshops. And these Photoshops are... Um, some of them, most of them are mine. There's a, a few that are not, and you know some of them are quick and not really greatly done, and some of them are, are you know more time to spend on them, and uh, just to get some ideas of how things might look in the car. And this was back before I had my paint job. I had no spoiler. Uh, there's a set of spats that were made for the 205, and I can't find them anymore. But they were, uh, I thought those mixed with the uh, the front spats I had of the car might look all right. Um, and of course, this is probably 18 inch size wheels. This is a person who had um, two or five skirts put on, and they were working on a front lip. And I think what I had done here is just did a quick Photoshop to see what um, the lip might look like in the same color. This one here, this car is actually a beautiful example. Um, he has these weird fender spacers out uh, because he has such wired tires. Uh, but the reason I show this one, um, the, sk the skirts don't look good. But the rear section, uh, it was just it was based off the idea the way the 205s have this sort of extra sp bit on there. Because the 205s, uh, their form is actually very similar to the 185. But they've extended a few things. And they've lowered that body line a little bit and modernized it. And this was just... Uh, you know, there's stock, and there's what that little bit would look like. And I think that little bit is all the car needed in the rear. I mean, I, th I think that really changes uh, the back end enough and looks and looks really good with it. And, of course, this is the, the Camaro lip when it was first test fitted. And what it might look like if I had the 205 skirts on there... Um, and a custom rear lip, and it was all black. Just sort of that, you know, the, I guess you see the look on GTR and a few other cars. Uh, I think Audi made it popular in the 90s with the black ground effects. And this was just an example of what it might look like with uh, everything painted the car color. It's not a perfect match as far as Photoshopping goes, but it's just a good idea. And uh, this is another Photoshop experimenting with, uh, you know, skirts. You can see how it sort of sinks in but you add a skirt on there it just brings that line down a little bit and these rear spats aren't weren't a very good design they were really just experiment and that's all we can do we can just experiment see what looks good and that's what's great about some of these these applications is we can use them to to get a better idea um, of how things might look before going through the trouble of fabricating uh, another concept with the black parts um, experiment with rear bumper. Uh, what if we cut up a super bumper and try to make it fit uh, on a Celica? And it, it doesn't look bad. Uh, more. Now this is, uh, I think, the uh, Type R lip. How it might fit if things are stretched out properly. This is, of course, the Camaro lip. Um, I had already fitted on there, and this is just to start an idea of uh, if I should paint it or leave it black. Profile of the same shot. This is a Photoshop someone else had done. And while I don't like the, the hood vents, I think uh, this rear bumper, there's some interesting potential here. 
This is another one I didn't do. This was a diffuser idea this one had. And essentially they just lowered the rear section and then had a cut up where the diffuser really would be a gas tank cover that came through. And I thought it was a good a good example. Now this one is not a Photoshop uh, completely. This is an actual um, 240 front end that someone had grafted on a 185. And the problem with it was were these awful wheels. Um, they seemed a bit small for the body. Um, they're blue. I just I just didn't care for them. But it, the real problem with the body kit was the line, they, they didn't go through the trouble of making the curvature of the fender uh, well match up to the front bumper. And so I just modified that a little bit in Photoshop and I added some wheels that I liked better. Um, and I think it improved the look of the car. It, it's a bit extensive and I don't think most people will do this, but you know there there are headlight options that might look good, especially if you change out the whole front bumper and I'm willing to do a bit of welding on the hood. And this is a lip concept I had. I, I think um, back, back to that Ford Focus lip that I showed in that one guy's car, that would be the simplest thing to do and be done. Uh, a lip that is about the same distance as this rear, um, I guess, spat or wh whatever this factory piece is that goes behind the wheel uh, and just, you know, slopes up slowly to the front of the bumper. And I think that adds a whole lot. This is a Photoshop if I'd used those spats uh, and completed it. This is, of course, before the paint job. Uh, just a rear uh, concept I had, and a skirt concept I had. Um, this is 205 skirts if I had gone through with that smoothed out front bumper I just mentioned. And this is some different versions of that. This is sort of, you know, an idea of with and without. Um, and I, I really like how this it feels like it widens the front of the car. It gives it this weight and it's more aggressive uh, just by filling in this little area here. And this is another photo Photoshop for someone else. Uh, this is if we didn't have a gas tank, this would work. Uh, just a rear diffuser. And just more lip concepts, uh, ducktail concept with a you know savage rear bumper and this is uh, the, I think, last generation Eclipse. If their bumper was sort of integrated with ours, what it might look like. Um, this is probably what black um, skirts from a, uh, from a, um, what's it we call it, convertible might look like. I don't think this Photoshop was actually completed. Now, this was a, a Photoshop of, um, I guess, one of the Shogun style kits. What the top secret bumper might have looked like on our car that they used for the Supra. And I think there's actually something there. Um, I think if something that was inspired by the, the form of that bumper was applied to our car, it actually might work really well. Uh, RX7 uh, side skirts, what they might look like on the car, because Rather than lowering the whole thing, just pushing out this rear area to help break up the, the tire a little bit. Now this was a concept, uh, the new, or I, think, I don't think the latest, but the, the, the one of the newer um, Lancers, they have the GTS model that has these spats. Um, and this is what they might have looked like on our car uh, with a diffuser. And I don't know if they're long enough, but I think there's some potential there. I think that actually might be a good option for our car. Uh, this is just had we lowered the front bumper, extended a little bit. Um, wasn't huge on that, but you know, just need to see how it looked like. Um, G35 rear end might look. Uh, this is taking the uh, garage cruise car and cleaning up the areas they cut up. I think it because they cut up the hood and the front bumper and stuff. And uh, you know, here's that. Integra Type R lip, if it was on a uh, front of the car, maybe. I think it was, it'd be a little bit lower in reality. This is just extending the front bumper, like I did with the other one, just slightly. Um, nothing too aggressive. Let's see, open this one up, and you can kind of... That's even lower. That's... 
and that's not at all. So you can see how little it does, but that little bit, I feel like, puts the, the weight in the front where it needs it, as far as visually. Uh, that Red Devil, or not, not Red Devil, one of, the, one of those cars I showed earlier, um, there was an example of a uh, 184 that had the 2000 Salaka TRD wing, and it actually looks really good on the car. And I think if you needed a, a wing for racing, uh, this is just a Photoshop on another member's car, that it might be a decent option um, for having a high wing that looks okay with the car. And of course, here's that uh, splitter that I had before, if it was completed all the way across. Just a couple of different variations of that. Uh, with some poorly photoshopped side skirts. Um, some experiments. There was some uh, veil side sp uh, spats designed for 350Z. And I was curious how those might look on uh, an all track. And it might be an all right idea. This is uh, Pat's car with just the, the lip. Um, and then experimenting with different wheels and whatnot. And this is his lip had it didn't have the protruding things on the side. It was just completely smooth across. Um, a little bit more like the idea I had for my lip. And this is some Photoshop I found online of someone made like a, a JGTGC car uh, out of a 185. It's wild looking and of course uh, not street worthy, but it's just uh, to, something interesting to look at. Uh, another, I think this was based off of a Volvo S70 uh, rear bumper. And this is if I put the center bar back on that... Um, Celica I showed earlier and got rid of the 205 spoiler. I think this actually looks really good. Um, it would have been nice if that lip and uh, skirts were available here in the States. And this is another Photoshop. This is before the paint job. This is to see what the Savage kit might look on my car at all black, like that white car had. Um, and maybe made the wheels black or graphite just to sort of get an idea of it, uh, what kind of aggressive look it created. And I thought it was okay. These are this is a the Savage car we saw earlier with different wheels. I wasn't huge on the wheels that were on there. Uh, and this is another one with if the lip was modified. Because um, I feel like even if the wheel can look good, the finish of a wheel can affect the way they, uh, uh, they f flow with the car. And so I got rid of the wing that it had. Um, I also tried if we got rid of... Um, the little area that scoops up on the Savage design just to see how it looks straight across. And that's the wheels that were on there. And you can see, I mean, they're not bad. Um, I just think that they're so bright and chrome that they detract a little bit. Something a little bit more muted is a little bit more st my style. Just an experiment with a rear diffuser. I think this was based off of a Porsche design. Another experiment with diffuser on uh, the Savage kit. Experiment with sky, uh, convertible side skirts with the spats that I had. Now this is probably the, the best view of that lip concept I had that I think I would be completely happy with, but I don't think there's any way to make it beyond fiberglass. But you can really see here um, when they're side by side how much space there is underneath the car. And when you, you take that away and you kind of flow it in, I just think it makes it a lot more aggressive, um, a lot more bulldogish. Uh, I just prefer it like that. But most likely that will never happen. And then maybe if the SS3 spats were made into a complete lip, what it might look like. Um, that same lip idea I had where it's rounded under, what it might look like on another car. And this bigger wheels, better offset, full kit, uh, just the front lip, regular size wheels. Now this one might not be entirely accurate either. 
this is I showed the WRX bats earlier but I wasn't a huge fan of uh, the way they looked and they make another style and I think this actually might flow with the car better and this is with the 205 skirts um, there could be some work needed and they might actually be off scale because I had to take them from a photo but I think there might be some potential here and they're only like 60 bucks so that might be a affordable way to experiment and, you know profiles experiments with different types of lips and how they change the flow of the car depending on the angle based stock up top uh, more of a sloping up more of a sloping forward and uh, I was just curious how the Grady super lip might look on the car um, of course it had to be cut in the middle because it's too wide but it's an idea and then another view of that curved lip and then possibly some curved spats and what those do is they bring out the width of that rear fender a little bit um, so it doesn't just curve up and another experiment with 205 skirts and those spats I had um, another example of just a lip idea and uh, that's all the photoshops so you know that that's pretty much everything I know it's been a long video and I just want to give you guys some ideas of how all this looked and you know the way the car was designed how certain lines affect it different examples of what people have done um, and, you know, I might not do something that everyone else likes, but based on what I've observed on other people's designs and production things, I feel like I can come up with something that suits my taste. Um, I'm going to take my time, and I'll do some videos in the future uh, with front lips I'll experiment with, and I'll do some videos when I do my side skirts and finally my rear lip. So, but yeah, thanks for checking it out. Um, and for being patient and just don't forget to rate and subscribe and stay tuned for future videos.